Hello everyone, so today we are going to see how we can analyze the Twitter data by using AR services. And we're using the most famous one that in 2023, that is ChatGPT. Uh, so there are a lot of other services available, especially from AWS. We have uh, a lot of services like Comprehensive, Comprehend uh, to process text message. Uh, but today I'm going to show that how we can use ChatGPT, the free version of ChatGPT, to analyze tweets. Uh, because we're using free version, so there are several limitations. Number one, we need to export data from MongoDB into text message. And number two, uh, we can only process about 200 tweets. So if you want to process more than 200 tweets, or if you want to connect data to your MongoDB directly, with ChatGPT, uh, you may need to use the paid ChatGPT API, or you can use other uh, AI services like AWS. All right, so first let's uh, open Campus. Uh, we use that one in our previous labs, and we connect to our uh, MongoDB database. So you can see here, we still have the connection information that's stored. Uh, so if you cannot find out the connection information, please check the previous labs and see how you start uh, the connection information. So now I'm going to connect uh, to the MongoDB database. And you can see in our previous lab, uh, we have a few tweets that have been collected. Uh, so in my case, I have about 2,000 documents or 2,000 tweets uh, in the tweet collection. And if I look at the tweet collection, so those are the tweets. Uh, so before we export the tweets, um, we can make a very simple query. So for example, if you want to fill out a specific tweet, or if you want to uh, uh, analyze specific tweets, and you can define a query here. So for example, I want a tweet that has been favorited. So let's say favorite count. This is just my uh, example of the query. So let's say it's great than one. Okay, so I want to find out a tweet that so among those 1.8 thousand tweets, I want to find out tweets that has greater than one uh, favorite. And now you can see I have about 600 or 680 tweets. And among those tweets, I just want uh, those 200 tweets. Okay, so I just want 200 tweets because the free version of ChatGPT can only process 200 tweets. Um, and next, I'm going to export tweets into text message. So I'm going to go to collection and export collection. And now you can see we are using the query. So that is the favorite count greater than one and also limit to 200. And next, you need to uh, select the field that you want to export. Uh, so we don't need all the fields. Uh, we are looking for the text field. So if I go to uh, go down and it start with T, so text, okay. So that's a text field. And the output, uh, we're going to use a CSV format. Okay, and now you want to see, okay, where do you want to save the data? So I say select. Uh, I'm going to save to my local computer and also the downloads folder. Uh, so right now it is a CSV file, so I say select. CSV file and I say export. Okay, so now I have exported the 200 tweets and, and, and also I uh, define that, okay, those tweets that have at least one favorite. And next I'm going to see the file. So I see show the files. Uh, you can see in my downloads folder. So if I double click, uh, so it will bring the Excel files. Okay. And you can see that each single row contains one tweet uh, except the first one. So the first one is just the text field name. So I'm going to delete that one. And now you can see each single row contains a single tweet. Okay, and I have uh, 200 tweets. Okay, uh, I don't think uh, we can process a CSV file. So let's export the data one more time. And this time, let's say I'm going to export that as a txt file. So let's export the type, um, 
the data one more time. So I, I'm going to export that as t text t e x t file, and I say save it. All right, and now I'm going to close this CSV file. So now you can see I have two files. Um, one is text file and one is CSV file. So if I open text file, uh, it's just like again those tweets that in the uh, text document, and that I will uh, bring that onto ChatGPT and also ask ChatGPT to analyze the tweets. All right, so that is process the data. So next, uh, so how can we bring the how can we open the ChatGPT? So we're not going to use the OpenAI uh, website. Actually, so in the latest version of the Microsoft Edge uh, browser, so they have already integrated ChatGPT in that browser. So what we're going to do next is that first we need to create a free Microsoft account. Uh, so we may all have a GMU account which can be used to log in with Microsoft services like Office, um, uh, SharePoint, OneDrive, etc. But that account does not work with uh, the Microsoft Edge. So we need to create a personal Microsoft account and make sure that it's free. So we can go to this website and here I'm going to see account. And I say I want to create one. Again, we're not going to use our GMU account, so create one account. And you just type your uh, your personal email. So for example, I used my Gmail to create that account. Create that account. Uh, and once you have that account created, you need to download the latest Microsoft Edge browser. So that is uh, from this URL. So download that one. Uh, I know that most people they probably are not using the Microsoft Edge as as their default browsers. So is, if that's the case, please download and install the Microsoft Edge browser. All right. So once you have the Microsoft account and you have the uh, Edge browser being uh, installed, uh, so now you can open that browser. So that's how it look like the latest version. And on the top right, you can see this discover button. So that is where you can use the, the chat uh, on the Edge browser, which is powered by ChatGPT. So I'm going to click the discover. And if this is your first time using uh, this chat function, uh, you need to log in with your Microsoft account that you just created. So I say start chatting. And now you need to sign with the account that you just created. Uh, again, I test in my GMU account, which does not work. So you will have to use our personal account that we just created. So I'm going to sign with my account. OK, uh, so once I signed in and I have this welcome page. OK, and seeing uh, so just uh, additional information about uh, this browser, etc. And you can also choose, uh, do you want a more creative or more precise response? Uh, so let's say we want a more accurate response. And before we start, we also need one more step that allow the chat GPT or allow uh, Edge browser to, to access or to process our local uh, documents. We click those three dots more options. And then we are going to change the notification and app settings. OK. And from there, you can see app settings. We want the page context to be enabled. OK, so we enable that one so that will allow uh, this browser to read our local documents. OK, so once that has been enabled and we are going to bring our text uh, file which contains those tweets into this browser. So uh, the way to bring that one is pretty simple. So you just find out that text message and drag that one to your browser and hit enter. Okay, so now you're reading this uh, text message that in your browser. Okay, 
And now we're able to ask ChatGPT to summarize our document. Okay, so we can just simply type our questions and to this uh, chat box. Let's say summarize this document and we'll hit enter. Uh, so now the chat GPT is, is processing your document and hopefully they are able to recognize that it's uh, talking about a bunch of tweets. Okay, and you can see very nice. So you can see that this web page appears to be a collection of the tweets uh, related to GMU. And also they already gave you a very brief summary of those tweets. I think that is perfect. That's very, very nice. Uh, so you don't need to read um, those like say 200 tweets and they can give you a very quick summary of your tweets. All right, uh, so now uh, you can try to ask more questions and uh, the chat GPT or the edge browser we are able to answer your questions based on the content of those tweets. Uh, so for example, you can say, okay, so what is a sentimental? So let's do a very simple sentimental analysis. So what is a sentimental? Okay, and uh, you can see that now we get results. So overall sentimental is very positive, and they also give you a detailed explanations why they are positive. So they highlight accomplishment and success. Okay, uh, and there are also a few tweets that are neutral. Okay, and but there aren't any negative expressed in this page. Okay, so that's very nice. You can ask ask. Uh, ask uh, the browser uh, to summarize what are the major topics. I see, uh, tell me the top 10 topics. Okay, and now let's wait and see what are the responses. Okay, and now you can see they have some um, they just identify the 10 topics uh, from those tweets. Uh, for example, the sports teams, uh, events like a virtual panel, uh, and also uh, STM education, uh, research opportunities, etc. Okay, um, and also you can ask a more specific question. Let's like see, okay, uh, uh, for example, I'm interested in the NFL Pro Day. So Tell me more about GMU NFL Pro Day. Okay, so what is that one? And uh, how are people talking about that in the tweets? Okay, um, so here, uh, those are the details. Again, you don't need to read the entire tweets but just by answer ask a few questions and you're you able to get response uh, very fast and also you can do like say give me some examples of those tweets let's say give me of tweets talking about uh actually you can type sentence more carol so you don't need to follow exact the exact sentence that i typed here um let's see i want to see uh which one i would be interested um let's see what is a jamie farmer's market okay jmu um, okay so uh i want look at the, i want you to select those tweets that are talking about jamie farmer's market since that is one topic that uh, you summarized, okay? And see if they are able to identify those uh, specific tweets. Okay, so it looks like uh, there's only one tweet uh, that uh, talking about GMU Farms Market, that is this one, okay? And that's, uh, that's very nice. All right, uh, so please feel free to ask uh, chat GPT or ask the, the edge browser that more questions that you're interested. Um, however, there are some limitations 
of using uh, ChatGPT in this way. So number one is that if you export a huge amount of data, let's say 1,000, 2,000, or even 1 million tweets, um, if you are going to analyze tweets in this way, so that will not work because ChatGPT, or this is a free service, you can, as you can see, I didn't pay any uh, credits or using theirs for using their services. So if you have huge amount of data, uh, they probably will just analyze uh, the tiny portion of your data. They will not uh, process or analyze your entire uh, data set. Uh, so if you want to use ChatGPT to analyze your huge amount of data, you probably need to go to their website and also register a paid version of the ChatGPT. Um, so, and then you can use your uh, API to analyze your tweets. So, so that's one option. Or you can use the other AI services, like AWS has a lot of AI services that can and can do the similar job. So that's one limitation. So the free version cannot process the entire, a lot of data set. The second limitation is that, so, uh, so the analysis may feel like it's very natural so that you're talking like with, a, uh, like feel like you're talking with a person. So that the, in, the experience is like uh, very careful. So however, if you want very specific result and you cannot get that one. So for example, uh, I want to see that the, how many tweets are positive. Okay, so if you ask a, a very specific, like quantitative question and you can see that uh, it's hard to, to tell uh, at now because they, uh, this is a language model. Uh, it's not a topic modeling, machine learning model. So uh, it can give you a very general um, response, but cannot give you precise numbers. So if you want to visualize the result, you probably need to use other API services, uh, AI services, not use this uh this type of chat gp to, to do your job okay so and um, i hope that you can please feel free to try any question that you are interested in, and also please feel free to try the other data set um, that you have uh essentially uh you can almost analyze any type of documents as long as that is available like in pdf documents or text documents but just remember that there are some limitations that we just mentioned.